Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making hawks from My Hero Academia. We rarely take up commissions on dolls, but we thought some of you might like to see this one, so here we go. Our perfect candidate for hawks is Dexter Charming from Ever After High doll series. He's my favorite male doll, as well as my favorite male character from the show. Our first boy custom doll, Armand the Merman, was made with Dexter as a base too, so it's also a sentimental doll to work on for me. I'm going to prepare the doll the usual way, cutting the hair, dunking the doll in hot water to soften the vinyl, scraping the hair from inside using scissors and pulling them out with tweezers. When our victim is hairless and bodiless, it's time to wipe off that cute face. I'm using acetone and cotton pads. If you've watched our Aaron the Candy Boy video, you may remember that I lost some footage of doing his hair. Well, this doll was in progress at the same time as Aaron, so some of the clips are missing here too. For example, almost all the face-up scenes. I'm really sorry for that, but I have a quick reconstruction of what I might have done during the process. So first I'm making the sketch with light brown pencil, which is much easier to remove than black. Then when I'm happy with the result, I'm switching to the black pencil for the eyes and drawing the basic features like irises, eyebrows and mouth. I'm also adding his facial hair with brown pencil. One clip of the face-up successfully survived and I can show you drawing the waterline where I'm going back and forth between acrylic paints and watercolor pencils and putting on the shadow under his eyes. Unfortunately, we have to go back to the reconstruction. I made a lot of eye and eyebrow details and some skin texture and you have to believe me that this was the result. For his clothes, I used a basic jacket pattern that I made from some original Ever After High clothing that we got with our dolls. Sewing is pretty repetitive, so if you've been here long enough, you'll know how it goes. Shoulder seams, hemming sleeves, pinning sleeves, burning yourself with an iron, attaching sleeves, making and adding a collar while wearing a funny looking band-aid for burns, some other hemming, closing the sides and the sleeve, and our favorite, turning clothes right sides out. Next up, very weary ironing, because you already burnt yourself, that's to make the seam lay flat when hemming the bottom. And this is how it looks. I wanted to add those wool-like cuffs, but the only fluffy material I had was this doll bathrobe, so I cut it into strips. I glued it onto the jacket with hot glue, cause let's be honest, in this scale not everything has to be sewn. For his shirt, I wanted to add the stripes on it and my favorite way is having Alex paint things, but this time I took one for the team and did it myself, using my favorite heat transfer vinyl from Arteza. Since we made the doll a while ago, it was before Hawks was in the anime, and we only had colored pictures of him that were fan arts and other sneak peeks online, so I took the liberty of guessing what color the stripes should be, and I chose white. We now know that they're yellow, as well as other things that will not match in color for this doll, so we hope you can forgive us that we filled the missing pieces differently. I pressed on the design and sewn up the shirt just like I did the jacket. Hox has light brown hair color that I would call Slavic blonde and it's a very pretty hair color but I couldn't find yarn that would suit him well so I dyed this light grey yarn. No footage here as well, but we did yarn dyeing on this channel before in Octavia's video and the process is exactly the same. I took a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and alcohol inks and applied it on the wefts. In this case, it was a mixture of yellow, orange, red, blue and black ink and I made some color variety in different batches of wefts. After two or three soaking sessions and a few hours of drying, 
They were ready to glue them onto the doll's head. After I finished gluing, it looked like this. Let's give a little trim to our Legolas, I mean hogs. I'm starting from the back of the head and going up with my scissors until I'm satisfied with the length. The front was a tricky part, because I wanted the hair to look short, but still be long enough to cover all the glue. After some finishing touches of camera, the hair looks like this. We already had trousers that match Hulk's design from Hunter Hans Mendel. We wanted to give him a belt, so I'm cutting excess fabric from the belt loops. With a piece of wire I'm pulling the belt that I made from black craft foam. I think I could have pulled it through both loops at the same time, but I didn't think about it then. The belt was cut longer, so I'm not worrying about the holes that I made with the wire. I'm making the buckle from the same craft foam. When the belt is ready, I'm gluing it to the pants, leaving some space for closure. Now it's finally time to make his iconic red wings. I made this beautiful, precise sketch and cut the wings from craft foam. If you haven't noticed, we love craft foam. Just like our Bonclay doll, he's going to have double layered wings with feathers on top. I think this kind of wings are perfect for anime characters. When all the parts are ready, let's give them some texture. I prepared the wire armature for the wings and painted the pieces with acrylic paint and parallax powders. To attach the wire, I'm using hot glue and I'm working fast. I'm trying to select the feathers that have one fluffy and one smooth end and layering them until all the foam is covered. The part that links the wing and the body needs more strength, so I wrapped it with more wire and covered it with hot glue for more volume. Our first idea was to make two separate wings on two magnets, but we forgot the magnets work on their sides too, so this idea was pretty dumb. We didn't have a bigger magnet, so we decided to glue the magnets together. Now the magnet part looks awful, but after painting it red and gluing more feathers, it will look great again. As a last step, I'm trimming the feathers. To make a housing for the magnets in the doll's body, I first traced the shape of the magnets on the back. Using a Dremel tool, I first drilled the holes in the corners. Then I used a cutoff wheel to connect them and then finished the job with an X-Acto knife. Then I finished it some more with a filing bit, so that the magnets would fit on the inside. Somewhere between making his hair and wings, I gave the doll a subtle body blushing and now it's time to add the magnets into his back. First I'm filling the space with aluminium foil, so the magnet has something to lay on. Then I'm adding epoxy sculpt and placing the magnets. Don't forget to try if the magnets are placed the right side, otherwise they will repel the wings. I didn't cover all the surface of the magnets with the epoxy because I was worried that they wouldn't be strong enough to hold the wings in place. He has a shirt and a jacket and the magnets and the wings are covered with glue, feathers and more glue. And I didn't want another layer between magnets. 
It's not the perfect solution, but it works and I assume he will be dressed most of the time. And if not, he will have wings in this place so it won't be visible anyway. The original pants had velcro and I don't like that, so I swapped it for a snap closure. I'm going to bunch up the leg holes a little bit to mimic Hawk's style a little bit better. I'm gonna give him fingerless gloves, as sewing normal gloves for a doll would be difficult. It's just a tube with a stitch that allows the thumb to be separated from the rest of the fingers. Hawks has headphones, so to help me design them, I first used another doll's earmuffs to get some reference for the size. I took a picture of them and imported it to Fusion 360. I traced out the shape, enlarged it, and using images of Hawks, I added the details to match the design as accurately as I could. Our resident printer will do the printing this time. The finished print looked like this. It has some leftover support marks, so I'm sanding them with sandpaper. Then I'm painting the whole thing with shiny acrylics. I left the inside unpainted to avoid scratching the face with dark pigment. This may look like a bra, but it's actually his eye protector. In the show he has it yellow, but we didn't know that because when we were making him there was no official colored pictures from the anime, I think they showed up on Twitter a month later. The jacket lacks a few details and I'm going to fix that. First I'm drawing two pockets. Then I'm gluing little buttons on both sides of the jacket and on the pockets. I believe the shoes used to belong to Porter Guys from Monster High, but now are sprayed with primer and I'm going to paint them light brown and black. As always, I'm covering them with two layers of matte varnish. As a last accessory, I'm going to make this stand look a little less Monster High-like and more My Hero Academia-like. It's going to be a brick wall and it's built mostly with cardboard, hot glue and paint. This is how he turned out. I usually refrain from making characters I don't know, especially from people's beloved animes, let alone a character that you can only see in black and white. It was a bit of pressure to handle and in the end, I kind of like our color scheme a little bit more than his official anime look. Our way he looks a little bit more muted and mysterious, and I like him like that. Do you like My Hero Academia? Who's your favorite hero? Tell us in the comments down below, but please keep it spoiler free as I only saw the anime. My favorite is definitely All Might in all his forms, but I also like Mina and Todoroki. And if you haven't seen the show like me, I have a bonus question. How many times did we say the word magnet in this video? My guess is about 50. First one to comment the correct number in the comments gets 100 Enchantarium points. From now on, the Enchantarium points winners will be featured in our videos, so good luck! Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! Magnets.